How y'all doing tonight? Today I was at work and saw one of the guys in the lunchroom or the break room and he was eating something for lunch and it inspired me to make this recipe tonight. He was eating some Swedish meatballs just a frozen dinner. And I was thinking, hey, I can make Swedish meatballs. I've made them before. They were kind of semi-homemade, but I want to make them from scratch and show you how good they can be. Now you can feed the whole family with them and really inexpensive to make and not that hard to do. And you'll get a lot of flavor out of them you make them yourself. Okay? So first off tonight, I'm going to start off with uh, some bread. It's just some uh, just plain white bread. And what I did here, let me see if we can get you in and see it a little bit better. I took uh, four slices of white bread and just cubed it up. I'm going to add to that. It's almost like you're making a bread pudding. Two and a half cups of milk. Whatever kind of milk you guys just happen to use 2% of what I had in the kitchen. Okay, so let's uh, come. Stir that bread and that milk. Just get everything soaking, all right? So we're going to let this bread sit here and soak for a few minutes while we go over it. I'm going to start on other ingredients. Okay, I've got about two tablespoons of butter. Melted here in my old cast iron pot. Now I'm gonna put a small white onion I got chopped up. Wish I had a little bit more onion, but I just had that one small one. This'll do. And I'm gonna saute that onion, just soften it up a little bit. Okay, now the onion starts to get a little bit of color to them. You can see they cooked. I'm gonna turn this. Off, I'm gonna put my onions to the side and a little bit over. Okay, now we got these onions cooked down. Let's start assembling a meatball mixture. Now, what I have here, let's go back a little bit where you can see. I've got three different kinds of ground beast. I've got ground pork. This is a little bit of uh, 80 20. No, I'm sorry. This is 73% uh, lean, a little chuck. And this is some leaner, really lean ground chuck they had on sale, or you can use ground sirloin. I'm just going to mix all these. That way you get a good grind, good uh, texture in those meatballs. Some nice, real lean pieces in there to give you that lean meat, a little bit of that texture that you want with that, but still some fatty stuff to give you that flavor. So, got my bowl here with this milk in here and the bread. Go ahead and start putting some of this stuff in there. It's a pound of each, by the way, so it's three pounds of meat. Pound of that lean, lean stuff in there. Large right here. Let's start mixing that in. Now I've got a pound of my, I'm going to go ahead and put the pork in the center piece there. Pound of my pork. And the pound is 73% lean. So three pounds of ground beast. Different lean and fat content. Of course, one's pork there. Now we're going to go with a little bit of flavor. I've got some spices here. What I have, I've got one teaspoon black pepper, a half a teaspoon allspice, freshly ground, a half a teaspoon of nutmeg, freshly ground. Also got a little bit of sloppy mama in there. I've got a teaspoon of black pepper. Okay, and it's gonna give some good, good flavor. Man, it smells so good, that those spices. Mix that, that time or two. Now I've got that onion, remember? Sauteed that onion. Put him down in there. And I've got one little bunch of green onions that I busted up. Put that in there. And once I mix this a little bit, I'm going to go ahead and transfer this to my stand mixture. Okay, so I've got my stand mixer here. And I'm going to let it go probably for a couple of minutes. I know on a lot of, it's on low speed. 
you know, a lot of meat mixtures they say don't mix it much or something like that. This is one that you want to mix the heck out of it, okay? So let that go for a couple minutes. Okay, now they've been going for a couple minutes. I'm going to go ahead and shut it down. You can see how smooth that meat mixture is. That's how we want this. This is not going to be like spaghetti and meatballs, meatballs, where they're real, you know, that real like lumpy texture that you get, or it's just, you can really tell. This is going to be a smoother texture to these meatballs. But it's still going to be really, really good. Go ahead and clean this. You got to be careful getting your paddle and stuff off here because you don't want to infect your whole machine get all this grind meat all over. So we'll go ahead and get that off. Okay, got that out the way. Now it's time to start making the meatballs. Okay, so just want to take a little bit of this meat mixture here. You want to clump it together, go back and forth like that. You'll, it feels, it doesn't feel like hamburger meat really. It's a lot lighter, okay? That's how it's supposed to feel. I'll make you a nice ball by like this. We're going to set aside over here. I've got that little, little pad now. Now I've got a little bit more butter in that cast iron pot and we got these meatballs sitting over the side. We're just going to do this a batch at a time. So what we're going to do Start laying them off in, in a pot. This is just going to brown. A nice crust on it. Okay, let them go a couple minutes there on each side. Okay, they in about a minute on this first side. I'm going to check them. Slide through there looking good, looking nice and brown. That's that, so we're going to flip it. Be careful with them. Like I said, they'll fall apart on you. Not too, too easy though. They're pretty, pretty, pretty sturdy. I say that I'm messing this one up here. Okay. All right. I'm give them a couple of mirrors so on the other side. I'm going to flip them once again. Now remember, we're just grinding. We're not flipping them all the way here in this pan. Don't worry if you still see some paint. Just want to get a nice little crust on it. Go a little bit on that side again. Now I'm going to transfer them over here to this baking sheet. Alright, now I got my oven to keep 250. Okay, now I'm spending a minute or so on that side again. I'm going to transfer them to this baking pan. I got this little cooling rack on here. Of course, I use that to uh, make sure they don't just sit there and soften their own grease while they're baking. I'm going to bake them for the remainder of the cooking time. Okay, I'm going to be sure to get all these other little bits of beef out of there, put them to the side because they'll just burn the pan for our next batch. I'm going to set these in that up. Okay, now my last batch of meatballs is done browning. I've had these other ones in there on about 250, 275. I'm going to put these in on that tray. Now I'm going to turn that oven up to 350. Once these guys cook, put the rest of the way. One more. Day. I'm going to scrape some of these scrapings off the bottom of this pot and turn this heat down now. 
So I'm gonna let those guys bake in here on 350 for about 20 minutes. Okay, while that meat's cooking, and just because I have it, I'm gonna saute me some mushrooms. I got a poor Bella here cut up. I think he good good in here. You don't have to put mushrooms in here, but if you got one, hey, everything's always better with mushrooms and garlic in my thing. Let's go ahead, get that mushroom in here, and just stir him around here in the oil and saute it up a little bit. Okay, now that I got these mushrooms, see how it's sauteed down here? See how you can see how they're looking real, real nice right now. That's just how you want them to look. I'm going to take these out and put them on the side. Okay, now y'all see me do this many, many a times. I'm gonna get a root going. Meat balls are about done. That's about a quarter stick of butter. I'm gonna get a little bit of oil. Okay, now that you got your butter and your oil kinda hot, go ahead and put in flour. I'm using a half a cup in this case. You can use almost an even ratio fat to flour. I like to use a little bit more of the fat or the liquid. It's just easier that way. And it depends on how much liquid you're trying to thicken up is how much roux you need. This is enough roux to thicken up about six cups of liquid. It's thicken up pretty good. And go ahead and turn that down to low. Do the stirring there. I'm going to put my root guy, my rooster, in there. I might add a little bit more oil to that because it's kind of thick. Move my roux over here to the back burner. Let it just stir on low. Oh, medium low heat. And let it go, but you can't quit stirring that. Now I'm heating this pan back up. My original pan. It's all with the... Uh, put some onions in there. Little frozen onions. Then got some miracle style season blend. This is onions, carrots, and celery. Okay, all the difference between this and Cerny has got the, the carrots in there instead of bell peppers. So we're gonna put a little bit of that in there. That's gonna give us some good, good flavor. Alright, we're gonna so let that saute for a minute. This is also gonna help deglaze this pan here. Pick some of this wonderful stuff up off the bottom. Okay, now I've cooked these vegetables down, taking up a bunch of that good stuff off the bottom of the pan. Now it's about time we add some of the stock. First off, we're going to add that root. Let me get that situated. Be careful with this root because it's hot, hot, hot. Okay. Throw that root in, mix it with some vegetables. I almost forgot, oh man, I had a little bit of garlic. Okay, about a tablespoon of garlic to all this. Now we can start adding our stock. I've got four cups of beef stock. And it's fairly cold. You can't add hot stock to this because it'll just cook that root. I'm going to add a little bit of time. Blend this all in. See how it thickens that stock up as soon as it gets in there? That's what it's supposed to do. Stirring it just like this so I won't get no lumps. A little bit by a little bit. 
Make sure you ain't got nothing sticking to the bottom. In fact, I might switch to whisk here. So you that stuff that lumpy stuff, you want to break that up. Okay, throw the rest of it in there. I put a bouillon in there too, just to strengthen it up a little bit. A little bit better than bouillon. Make sure I get all that. Okay. Also, you want to put a half a cup of heavy cream. That's going to give it that wonderful creamy flavor. Make sure everything's mixed up. Just keep mixing and bring this to a simmer. It's starting to come to a simmer. I taste it. I'm going to go ahead and add one more half cup heavy cream. So all in all, we got a cup of cream in here. So we'll get some cream flavor to it. And then we'll put that mushroom in there too. I almost forgot about it. I got my meatballs. If you can see them sitting right over here in the pan, go ahead and start lowering these bad boys down in there. Oh yeah. These are going to be good, I'm telling you. And I tasted one of the meatballs too, and it was fantastic. So let me get these meatballs all down in there. So I got my meatballs in there. All nestled in. I'm going to keep stirring like this every few minutes. Keep it on about medium low heat. I want this simmer. Sit here and simmer for about 20 or 30 minutes. Alright, got me some egg noodles cooked here. My Meatballs are finished stewing over there. Let's serve some of this up. Okay. I'm going to plate with some egg noodles on there. Get a couple of these nice meatballs. Oh, wow. Like I said, these Swedish meatballs, you can make them smaller. Serve them as hors d'oeuvres, stuff like that. I was just making this as kind of a meal. So I put the bigger meatballs. Look at that. Yum, yum, yum. Okay, so let's give this a try. See how it is. What's that meatball? A little It's hot, I'll tell you that much. Mm -mm -mm. That is a really nice, beefy, creamy taste. Really, really nice dish. I'll tell you what. You don't need to be eating no frozen TV dinners of this. This is some good stuff. You try this recipe.